fanning out before the helicopter, which is like a monstrous green bottle fly with ferociously buzzing wings biting at their flanks no matter how adroitly they crisscross the salt flats, bearing down relentlessly until their coats turn dark with foam. The Mustangs have galloped almost 25 miles without stopping, even the little ones. On its signal, an air horn blasts the valley, and the bandit sees another yellow-coated cowboy standing up in the sage, holding the lead of an unsaddled, dun-colored mare with a black mane and tail. The cowboy releases her, and the mare takes off eagerly, going at tremendous speed, because she has been trained to run for a grain bucket hanging at the end of the capture funnel. The tired herd sees her and follows. For several heart-stopping minutes, she takes the lead. Then she flies down the chute neatly as an arrow, and the Mustangs trample behind her into captivity. The bandit lowers the fogged-up field glasses with disgust. He hates the dun mare and her handlers. He has always reserved his deepest contempt for spies, for collaborators who can be bought for a bucket of grain. The cowboys have a name for the single animal that betrays the herd. They call it the Judas horse. The setting, a farmer's market in Columbus, New Jersey. Inside, a woman shopping for produce with her baby. She's under surveillance by this man. He stays outside hoping the woman won't spot him. He solicits help from random shoppers. Ma'am, ma excuse me. I'm a recovery agent. He tells him he's a recovery agent, a fancy term for bounty hunter. And he needs help capturing the woman you, inside. Let me, show you, let me show you a picture. Hold on. I'm trying to ID somebody inside there with a blue jacket. Do you see the woman I'm talking about? And shoppers seem to want to help. The bounty hunter needs positive ID and asks a shopper to take the wallet from the woman inside. If she walks away from that carriage and you see the wallet, just pick it up and walk it out okay. to me, okay? You're a cop, so I'm not going to get in trouble? Let me show. Come oh. over here. Okay. All right. This is what our bounty hunter flashes, a badge we bought online, no questions asked, and it offers no legal authority. The bounty hunter, his name is George, and he agreed to ask people to do things he normally wouldn't. The woman inside, she's Tracy, an actress playing the role of a mother who may have kidnapped her baby from the father. Will the shopper follow the command of an authority figure and actually take Tracy's wallet? She goes inside the fruit stand, and when Tracy turns her back, she swipes her wallet and brings it back to the man with the badge. Now, why in the world would anyone follow the orders of a stranger? Ma'am, excuse me. Can I talk to you for a minute? I'm working a fugitive job right here. He's about to ask this woman to drug and sedate our fugitive. What I'm going to ask you to do, just put this in there, and what I'm going to try to do is switch the soda on her. This will slow her down a little bit. You're going to slow her Mickey, aren't you? <laughs> well, it's basically, it slows her down. If she gets up, would you be comfortable just dropping this in there? It's outrageous. Will June perform this illegal act? When our actress turns her back, she sneaks in and drops the pill right into Tracy's soda. You actually put the pill in? Her yes, drink? I did. He, he showed me a federal agent badge. So, you know, what am I supposed to think? If I don't, then, then what? But, Julie, you didn't know this for sure. No, what I if, didn't. What if you harmed this poor woman? Then I guess that would be on my head, too. <laughs> Luckily for June's conscience and our actress, the Mickey was just some candy that we bought a few minutes earlier. How likely is it for us to listen to someone simply because they seem authoritative? Yeah, I guess I'm a sucker. <laughs> but also sucked into our plot is this next woman, Crystal. Somebody who kidnapped a child right inside this office right here. Mm -hmm. I want you to go in just real quick an idea for me. A little talk about the baby being kidnapped and then George asks Crystal to do a little kidnapping herself. Our baby isn't real, but Crystal doesn't know that. Okay, what you're going to do is walk back inside the produce area, mm -hmm. push the carriage straight to me. Okay. Okay? Without ever questioning our authority figure, Crystal heads inside to look for the baby. She locates the stroller, waits for an opportunity, and then... 
she pushes it right out to George, who's waiting in the parking lot. We were stunned. Walk fast, walk fast. Ma'am, what are you doing? Walk fast, walk fast, walk fast. Don't turn around, don't turn around. Excuse me, what are you doing? That's my baby. Why did you take my baby? Who is that? He's a police officer. He showed me his badge. You know for sure he's a police yes, officer? Only now does Crystal realize she might have been due, becoming perhaps an accomplice to a kidnapping. You have no right to take my baby. Crystal defends her actions. Her thoughts, she says, were with the baby. My sister has an infant, um, and I think it was just something that was really close to my heart, you know, and I was thinking about how bad I would have felt if someone had taken my sister's baby. Experts say empathy often determines whether people will act. And that's definitely true with this yeah. man. Yeah. Chris Blackman is a father of yeah. a six-month-old. No, we had him out yesterday. He's, and he's got a little sniffly. He's always yeah, that's what he has, too. Yeah. And he's drawn to our actress before our bounty hunter even approaches him, because she appears to be a new parent, too. What, what, what day was he born? Uh, Third five. <laughs> I'm losing my brain. Um, yeah, like the seventh. My name is Chris. But, oh, uh, sorry, I come Tracy. around here once in a while. Tracy. Tracy. Nice yeah. to meet you. We didn't think there was any way Chris could be recruited to help our bounty hunter. He and Tracy, after all, were bonding so well. But watch what happens next. Excuse me, sir. Can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a recovery agent. I saw you talking to that girl in there with the blue jacket on. Yeah. I know she got real friendly. Right. She's wanted for kidnapping. She didn't know the date of that birth either. She's got a warrant for her arrest. I understand. Chris is torn. Does he believe the friendly mother of a baby or a man who claims he's a bounty hunter? Do you have a police officer? I don't yet. They're coming down the way. Of the 22 shoppers we confronted, Chris is the only one who really questions our authority figure. Well, I don't have a police officer here now. This is making me a little nervous. Okay. I want to help you out. Okay, well, here's, wanna, I'm not asking you to do anything with the baby. Chris is conflicted and ultimately compromises. He refuses to take the baby, but he agrees to block Tracy while George pushes the stroller away. If she comes, just don't let her come towards me. I know, that's okay. If she comes, just don't come towards me. Where is my baby? Excuse me, ma'am. What? Can I ask you a question? No, Please, no, question? no, why? Ma'am? No. Where'd he go? Why did you sit there? Why did you do that? Sir, it's okay. Listen to me. I, I, I'm Listen to me. I'm dying. Relax. I'm dying right now. This is not real. It's a TV show. I didn't mean to shake you up that way. Well, it's, it's, it's part of a show called What Would You Do? And the question is, you're torn. I'm so sorry. I just had a boo. What's the lesson? Did you learn something here? Yeah. The bad lesson is, um, showed me a badge that you can anybody can buy. And almost anybody can be duped. The idea for testing the power of an authority figure came from a shocking true story. An assistant manager at a McDonald's received a call from a man claiming to be a police officer. He told the manager to strip search a young employee who he said had stolen a purse. The manager never questioned the man's identity and blindly obeyed. And it didn't stop there. The caller told another person at the restaurant to make the naked employee do jumping jacks. She was spanked and told to perform sexual acts. Turns out the call was a vicious hoax, a horrid example of failing to question authority. 